Hi, this is Dr. Justin here, and today's talk is on fungal infections. I can't tell you how many people come into my office with a fungal infections. So we get a fungal infection, you may notice many different things. Um, a yeast infection, essentially, is a fungal infection. You may see it um, with a thrush, which is kind of the white coating of your mouth. You may see it more in children more than, than adults. You may see a fungal infection on your skin, or maybe your doctor prescribes a, a ketoconazole or a nice statin cream. You may see it on your toenails. And also many patients have it on a subclinical level. They just have that slight fungal overgrowth in their gut that's kind of causing that bad breath, uh, causing that gas or bloating or causing that constipation. Now, you probably have a fungal infection one if you were drinking bad coffee. Coffee is known to be loaded with mycotoxins or fungus. Now the word mycotoxin, if you break it down, myco means fungus, toxin is toxin. So mycotoxin is a byproduct of fungus. So we'll kind of use that word mycotoxin and fungus interchangeably. So again, the biggest foods that contain mycotoxins, coffee. Coffee is a really big one. Uh, especially if we have coffee beans that are grown in a more moist environment, that moisture allows growth for that fungus to kind of just go wild. Second is peanut butter. Peanut butter is actually loaded with a toxin known as aflatoxin, which is a kind of mold. And a mold kind of fits under that overarching brand of fungus. Myself, five years ago, cutting peanut butter out of my diet, my macronutrients staying the same, so I didn't touch my carbs, my fats, or my proteins, or my calories, or exercise. Nothing else changed. Just cutting peanuts out, I was able to lose 5 to 10 pounds. Amazing. Next are meats that are fed grains. So again, grains are loaded with mycotoxins. There's actually a compound. The compound is called zeralinone. Zeralinone is actually a fungus that's actually compounded into a pellet form. And they put this pellet into the ears of cows. And what they find is the cows are able to convert 30% more of their calories to fat. So what they become is they become a fat storing machine. So what the literature is showing with fungus and these different toxins, it's actually slowing the thyroid and it's causing the body to essentially store this more as fat versus send it to the mitochondria to get burned. The next thing, a study came across my desk just recently showing that organic chlorines or organochlorines, these are just conventional pesticides that are found in foods, they are actually shown to be higher in people with an increased fat mass. So there's a correlation between people that are fatter and having more of these pesticides and toxins in their body. So this is an interesting relationship so it would be a good idea to cut pesticides out of your foods. In other words, eat organic. Eating organic will give you a chance of having a lower fat mass because the main mechanism and how these organic chlorines or pesticides make you fat uh, that was proposed in this scientific article was that there was a decreased amount of thyroid hormone. So your active thyroid hormone is T3. So what the study showed was these organochlorines are actually decreasing the amount of active thyroid hormone, T3, which is decreasing our body's metabolism. So simple things that you can do is, one, get off the fungal-producing foods or the fungal-rich foods, such as the poor coffee, the, the peanut butter, uh, the sugar, and eating the conventional meat that is fed grains. That's one of the biggest things. Next, Eat foods that are organic, that don't have these organochlorine pesticides that are going to downregulate your thyroid. I hope this talk was helpful. Any other questions, feel free and call or email the office. Thanks. Have a great day.